Hi everyone, um, welcome to my channel, Exploring Tarot um, with Sandy. That's me. Um, today I thought that we would look at um, some of the tarot pouches that I've made over the years. And lately I've made quite a few new ones. I've been experimenting, trying to find the perfect tarot pouch for me. Um, I tend to only put um, the de tarot decks that come in tuck boxes in pouches. Uh, other decks that come in harder um, boxes, I leave in them. Uh, however, one for one exception, and that's the ones that come in these large boxes, like Llewellyn boxes and such. Those I also put in pouches because I, I will not be pulling out a big box every time I want to read with with a car a, a deck. Um, so I just um, those I tend to just um, take out and put in a pouch and put the box away in storage somewhere. Anyway, um, let get, let's get straight into this, shall we? Um, when I first got my first um, Rider Waite Smith deck a few years, well, three, four years back, actually more like five years now, oh, time flies so fast, doesn't it? Um, but anyway, um, then I felt like I really wanted to make a pouch for it, and this was the first pouch that I made. I just went to the fabric shop and got something, um, got something that I thought, thought would f match the borderless Centennial Rider weight, which was the one I got. Um, little did I know that I would not uh, gel with that deck at all. I didn't like the the size of it because, again, my small hands, my small hands cannot cope with um, the large that deck. I don't know; it shouldn't be much larger than a standard tarot, but for, for some reason, um, it just didn't work with for me. Um, at the moment, nothing lives in this in this uh, pouch. Um, partly because I don't have any deck that I feel matches, because yes, I'm one of those who wants to match my decks with my tarot uh, bags, um, and also partly because I treaded this one a little bit weirdly. It doesn't have, like, uh, strings to pull on both sides. It only have has the string on one side, so you need to tighten it like so. Not that it's a big deal, it's just the very first I made, and it's not my favourite. Then, I also made, roughly at the same time, or after I started acquiring more decks, I made some standard, um, just black velvet bags, and added some little beads to it. This one houses my um, little <laughs> Waterstones deck. Um, or at least that's where I've seen them before. This one I actually bought online, I think. Um, read with it for a while, um, edged it in black. I think it's really cute. Oops, upside down. I think it's really cute, and I'm, you know, I don't really read with it much. Um, but I, for some reason, the guidebook is surprisingly good, um, I found. And um, I will try and, and work this one into my rotation, really, because it is it is rather cute. And when you start looking at the images as well, I think this is quite an underrated deck. But anyway, we're not here to look at the decks now, we're here to look at the pouches. <laughs> So, that was one of the little bags that I made, especially for this one. Another bag that I made from the same fabric is this one, um, that I made for the Earthbound Tarot. No, sorry, Earthbound Oracle. So I made it specifically for this one, so that it would fit properly in there. 
it's ugly and then I added this little moon charm to mirror the moon on the backs and of this card these cards and um, yeah this is also a really lovely oracle I adore this oracle and it's one of my absolute favorites And so that's that then. Right. Um, also from the same material, a little bit boring, but I mean, waste not. Uh, I still had some fabric left, so I made this pouch with the double ribbons, black and brown ribbons, and so this is black velvet and a brown linen um, lining. And this one is really big and and uh, wide because it is housing my. Anna K. Mass Market Edition. I also have the Anna K. Um, indie version, but that one I have not given its own pouch yet because it's li li it lives in its original box. I decided to make this Mass Market uh, version my working deck and um, keep the the indie version as a spare. Because the indie version is also a lot smaller and um, a lot darker. Um, I feel like the mass market version has cranked up the saturation and the contrast a little bit and make made them a bit brighter so they're a bit easier to actually see what's going on. However, I also did edge this deck in a dark brown, walnut brown to match the backs. But and I and also to match the bag, I really like the, the this combination. But I think this deck is ever so slightly too big for me to comfortably to shuffle with it. So I might actually uh, cut off these three borders, or maybe even all of the borders. I might not even need the titles but that's something for another day i'm not in a rush i'm not in a rush to trim this deck partly because i'm not really working with it at the moment although i'm hoping to work with it soon again then we've got the next pouch i made i think was this little one which i made from this really interesting shiny taffeta um, and I lined it with this bright it looks a lot brighter in camera it's really not this yellow in real life um, this one I made especially for um, a special deck of mine which is the Llewellyn Tarot uh, which I have trimmed and edged in a very similar yellow. But like I said, it's not this bright uh, greenish yellow that you see on the screen. In reality, it's like this warm mustard yellow to match the, the emblem on the back. And I wanted to make this a really special bag for this because it's, it's just such a beautiful deck. And it's so warm and nurturing and I got completely inspired by uh, Dawn Michelle over at Boho Tarot um, in how to trim this deck down. Um, so I just decided to, to um, follow her instructions. She's got really good, a really good uh, video on how to um, trim your decks 
so that they will be, um, you know, in line and flush when you're finished. This one is not perfect. Um, this was actually my first deck that I ever trimmed. And uh, that's this all thanks to Boho Taro. She completely, she completely um, set me off on the whole modding thing, uh, which I th I'm sure she did for many of us. And um, yeah, now I'm pretty much mod almost every all of my decks. Um, as, as you know. If, I, if they're too big for me or if there's some, some border that I find uh, troubling, then it will go. But anyway, that's the pouch that I made for the Llewellyn Tarot. Uh, next on my pouch heap over here is this. Um, linen green and brown linen pouch stringed with this nice brown ribbon and some string some jute, jute i think string is that what you call it in english <laughs> it's very a very rustic bag i wanted it i actually intended it to be for the um tarot of the Enchanted Forest, I think it's called, or is it the Enchanted Forest Tarot? I always mix mix it up. But I ended up making a different bag for that one, and for this, and then I ended up putting the Wildwood Tarot in this bag. And this Wildwood Tarot is a, a completely new deck to my collection. I've wanted it for so, so long, but I've always said no. To myself, uh, for some reason, um, well, I know the reason. The reason is because I was scared I wasn't going to actually read with it, because I was daunted by it. I, I've been every video I've seen of or walkthrough of it that I've seen, people are always saying that it's difficult to read with, and that um, it takes time to get to know the deck etc etc and you know that's why i held off getting it for such a long time but eventually i caved and mostly i think this card this card it's just so gorgeous <laughs> but anyway um i just um I caved and now it's here and it's so far has I haven't worked with it at all but I have given it a home in this pouch at least. All right, next up on the agenda is um this bag that I made um, I actually made this bag for the Druidcraft Tarot, but I ended up making that deck a different bag as well, that I will show you in a minute. But this one is made from this uh, crushed, well not crushed, but it's kind of velvety uh, fabric, and it's lined with this golden, uh, pale golden taffeta that I really like. I haven't found any beads for it yet, so it doesn't have any nice embellishments on the strings. But it doesn't really have a deck to house yet either, so it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, and this is the last uh, drawstring bag that I made. After this, I started experimenting with um, interfacing and making uh, more sturdier bags. So. The first one of the sturdier bags that I made um, is this one that I made for the Winterseer Oracle. And this one folds out so that it becomes this, this um, reading mat. And this one is made out of this um, 
really lovely linen look like it's it's such fine linen that it's it's like lustrous do you see it and um then the lining let me try and get this to focus the lining is this silvery cotton and i thought that would work so well with the backs of this deck look at that and also obviously the artwork i think that it would it works really well this is a little flap to put behind the card just to hold it in place but i mean just look at that little reading there lovely <laughs> i'm very pleased with this uh, reading mat actually let's move things up a little bit so you can see the whole thing yeah i'm really happy with how this one turned out so i continued uh, along the same fashion but i didn't make all of them into with the reading reading mats um, let's continue And then this just rolls up like that, and you put the elastic around like that. And I'm just so pleased with this elastic that I found. It's actually a hairband that I found and that I, you know, cut open and used for the bag. But it's just, you know, perfect for to match this deck i feel absolutely perfect so the next deck that i made was this one that i ended up making for the tarot of the enchanted forest i love this this um, ribbon that i found and then this one is also made by with um, this really fancy linen that I managed to get my hands on, some spare fabric. And inside we've got this luscious, luscious golden silk that is just so gorgeous. And this one houses, like I said, the tarot of it. The enchanted forest which i have edged in gold so i mean how how perfect is this i love it and this one opens up and you know you can use it for a one card spread if you want one card reading daily draw i just yeah I'm, I'm very pleased with this uh, bag, however, this annoys me, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and um, it annoys me when I sew and uh, it goes wrong like this and it, you know, it's not, like this side is fine but then this goes all a little bit <laughs> and it's, uh, it bugs me but I need to, you know, embrace it and just oops and just uh, live with it <laughs> because i'm not remaking this bag um it took me quite a while i'm getting faster every time i make them though but now i've changed uh, i used to have this leave this part open in order to flip it inside out um, at the end and then i would sew this part afterwards but I noticed that it was nearly impossible to get this part um, tidy. So for the other bags, I decided to give a different approach. And this one you close just by. Wrapping the ribbon around and just tucking over and give it a little pull. Like so. Okay. Uh, the next deck I made 
I decided to go all in with the gold silk and this ribbon is just absolutely fantastic I love it so much and I'm so glad I found it and um, yeah this one also just wraps around I decided to leave a little flap there because or it's <laughs> that's actually you know a little secret but uh, I managed to sew on the ribbon a little bit um, not quite straight and it bugged me I wanted it to come down straight so I decided to just you know flip it over and give it a little you know embellishment there so that it would come down straight when you wanted to wrap it up but anyway this one also has the same gold um, on the inside and this one houses the Druidcraft tarot that I have also edged in gold. Anyway, this card, this deck is um, also obviously trimmed because the thing is, with this deck, it was just too big. It was just too big for my hands the, with the borders, and I feel like the. I love this artwork so much more now when it is. cut off when the borders are cut off this is just one of my favorite cards i love this this card so much and these i think are going to be my new ways of making pouches i, I love the look of straight of drawstring bags there's nothing wrong with them but they they do make storing a little bit difficult i feel like it's a bit messy with the drawstring bags um, so in order to put them in a box or a drawer or a shelf uh, easily, I felt that this might actually be better because you can actually just, um, you know, put them like so next to each other in a box and it will look quite tidy and neat. So I might actually end up making new pouches for all of my decks that have um, these as well. If I can find the time and the, you know, inspiration. So I have two more bags to show you because um, after I made these with the, with the ribbons, I decided to also try my, uh, or, or actually I... I made a bag. I wanted to make a small a bag a the bag a little bit smaller for this other deck that I made uh, that I have trimmed down to a smaller size, and I ended up um, not finding. That's the, that's it. I didn't find the ribbon that I wanted for this bag. I didn't find any ribbons that I thought uh, would go with this deck. So. I ended up just put here putting a, a one of these snap buttons and it's just very handy and it you know looks quite all right I think so this one has this um, kind of uh, beigey golden or like um faded golden taffeta again the same that I had uh, lined uh, the one of the drawstring bags with and the lining in this one is this lovely little uh, cotton cotton lining with little golden moons and some grey moons interspersed and this one houses my Joy de Vivre tarot which I actually made a different bag for with the same fabrics but um, it just was too flimsy. I didn't use um, the interfacing and I just couldn't, I didn't feel like it was giving it enough protection at all. But I thought this, this uh, taffeta kind of goes with the backs a little bit. And I feel like the whole, with the little moons and the white golden 
like the white with the gold moves and everything kind of goes really well with the artwork in this deck. And like I said, this is also a, a deck that I've trimmed the borders off and I think this is one of my favourite trims so far. Um, I got the deck really smooth, really well. And then I also edged it in this um, rose gold uh, metallic ink pad. But yeah, so this is one of my favourites. And it fits perfectly like so. All right, the last bag for today is the bag that I made just two days ago, I think. Um, and that's this one. It's the same fabric as on this one, because uh, I had some left. And then it's the same uh, lining as on this one. So it's got this silvery, silvery lining on the inside and this one um, I made for a deck that has been without a home or a pouch for as long as I've had it and I've had it for over a year now and I've also trimmed this uh, have not edged it yet because I haven't found um, anything to edge it with that doesn't bleed over onto the cards um, and this is Tarot of the Magical Forest, I think it's called. I always mix this one up with the Tarot of the Enchanted Forest or the Enchanted Forest Tarot. Um, I can never remember the name. Um, and I had the hardest time to find fabrics that I felt would go with this deck. Instead, I went with the backs and I tried to match the backs. I almost decide i almost went with to to you know combine the blue and the green um linen but um ended up deciding against it because the interfacing needs um needs a more sturdy fabric to latch onto because you need to iron it um around you know on the high nearly on the highest setting in order to um, get it to stick properly so i needed to iron it onto something that was more like something cotton so that it would stick onto it when i tried to iron on this with the highest setting it actually melted the fabric it was so you know sensitive and it's it's very very thin this outer fabric so i needed and so the same with this it's like the same sort of fabric almost and I just needed, um, I needed the, the lining to be sturdier than this. Um, so I couldn't use both at the same time. But I'm really, really pleased uh, with how this turned out as well. Um, it's a nice, sturdy pouch and it does the job. It's not the fanciest one I've got and it's not the, you know, most beautiful one. The most beautiful one, I think, I think is this one. I really like I really really like this pouch um, so much and I think it matches the the druid craft so well but anyway let me know in the comments below what you think um, about the evolution of my <laughs> of my uh, tarot pouches and um, let me also know which ones were your favorite and did you think that I managed to do some really good matches with the fabric? <laughs> anyway, that's it for this uh, video. And I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that you will have a lovely day. Bye.